Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. I forgot the hat part. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to take a kit from my friend Tom from Ham Radio A to Z and put it together. It's a crowbar circuit. Let's go talk about it. I get to use my favorite soldering kit again. This is the Mini Bar Rev C full kit. Open her up and see what we get inside. There is your user manual. If you're watching this on your phone, be sure to use your phone to scan this so that you can see where the user manual is. You can get this at a-2-z.tech or you can reach out to support at a-2-z.tech. We have a very well-made circuit board with all of the difficult surface mount components already done for you and even some of the not so difficult surface mount components done for you. A top and bottom, a fuse block, and some Anderson power poles, and then some assembly hardware. So what exactly is a crowbar circuit? When I built my fuse blocks way back when, I got a lot of feedback, very positive feedback that said, it would be awesome if you could include a crowbar circuit. And I ran out of time and talent in order to do that, but Tom had more talent than I did and he has made a combination of the two. Only concern I have, and that's just because I like symmetry and balance, is that there's only one fuse block. But a lot of people had concerns with me fusing the negative, and I do know people who have had problems with the negative being unfused, and having a fuse on the negative would have saved their bacon. I'm just that kind of guy. No criticism, just information. Everybody's allowed to do it their own way. So far, very clearly labeled. The red is the positive, so the red goes to the red. And then we need to install the fuse block, and we are good to go. So what I will do is put this thing all together. Today I'm gonna to be using my Kester 6337 solder and my Pine Sill soldering iron. I am digging this thing. She's warming up. My last project I had this set a little high. I'm gonna leave it at that same high setting. And the reason why I'm gonna leave it at the same high setting is because these are very big and are conducting a lot of electricity and probably have large traces and therefore require lots of heat. All right, 676 is where I'm gonna run this today. What I'm gonna do is put both of the power poles in place and then they will be held at the same height so I have an easy way to work on it. Put some fresh solder on the tip of the soldering iron, which will help us make a better connection with the surface and add some more in. What I wanna do is I wanna create a big bubble of solder between the tip of the soldering iron and the thing that I am soldering to help with heat transfer. And you will know that you have the right amount of heat transferred when it starts to melt when you touch the devices. You can also just kind of hold it and you can see that the solder will start to flow once the board gets hot enough. So what is a crowbar circuit? A fuse protects you from over amperage, but it does not protect you from over voltage because you can run high volts and low amps and not have a problem. And that's one of the things that we have to worry about in radio. This is a very thick trace board. It is not like in my 676 temperature. So we will change the temperature up. I'm gonna make this 700, wait for it to warm up. So if for some reason your power supply ever goes bad, and I have had power supplies go bad, uh, I had a Kenwood power supply that went bad, and it provided 28 volts, I wanna say, somewhere in that range. It, I'm just, going by my memory because it's been a couple of years, but somewhere around 28 volts of power out, which would have certainly caused damage to my very expensive radio. A circuit like this would have protected that from reaching the radio at all. This is crazy. These traces are big. I'm gonna have to go up a little higher. The object is to put a lot of heat in very fast and get back out. And that's the minus button. That's not gonna work. So this device is fully resettable and it just clamps off the power going out to your radio if it goes above, I believe it is 15 volts, but it will be in the owner's manual, in the assembly manual for this kit. All right, we're at 8.30, let's let it warm up. All right, let's try that. There we go. Now she's happy. And I'm sure flux would help with this, but I don't happen to know where my flux is right now. And this is rosin core solder, which is supposed to be a good amount of flux to help you out with the project also. But if you're running into trouble, use some flux. All right, that takes care of that. Now we need a fuse holder. I 
And then this pine sill is designed so that when you lay it down, the hot part doesn't contact the work surface. I kind of like this blue color, but when you peel off the plastic, these should be clear. I'm gonna put the nuts on top. So that means bolts through the bottom and then little spacers and then the circuit board, big spacers and then the top cover. And then these are nylock nuts, so you don't need any lock washers. If you wanna see some crazy guy wielding metal together in a small, tight RV space, this is the channel for you. Sometimes I even do it outside, but it was rainy today. Be sure you're subscribed so you can see more videos like this one. All right, and there is your finished project. Very nice acrylic case, makes it look very professional when it is all finished being built. You have your positive identified on both sides. You have your in and your out, and this would definitely be a directional kind of thing because it would need to know where the high voltage is and where you want to protect the voltage. And then you have an SCR circuit here. That puts the crowbar circuit kit all together. This is a crowbar and a fuse all in one, and it has power poles on both sides, which are the de facto standard of ham radio power awesomeness. Power pole the world. If you want to see a test to prove that this thing works, check out my friend Jim's channel. Uh, over at FEP Labs Radio, he hooks this up to a variable power supply and cranks it up past its rated voltage and watches it die. And then resets it and tries all over again because this thing is resettable. So now you've got voltage and amperage protection all baked into one little box that is portable. A lot of your high class power supplies will have these SCR circuits built in to protect your radio. Some don't. If you find that your owner's manual says that it doesn't have one of these circuits, make sure you get one of these kits. If you're operating portable with a battery, then you definitely want one of these kits in case the battery happens to run away crazy. Your BMS should protect you, but you never know. If you're interested in everything there is to know about that pine sill soldering iron, I've got a video right up here for you that teaches you all about it. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.